On this week's episode, we are getting jacked for cheap mods. We have an amazing episode planned for you all. Yeah, Aline, why don't we take you into the to the ah, new Jeep? Ah, the only way to get in, you guys. The only way to get it. Keep them coming. Make sure to chop those wheels and just step right into your office. <laughs> As it should be, bud. Sorry, each one was getting stronger and stronger. Bro. All right, we, we did this three times because of all the noise. On today's... Uh... Not easy making YouTube videos, I'll tell you that much. This is crazy. The squats. Exercise for today. Garage couple fans, back straight. All right. <laughs> what are you doing there? Just setting up the shot. Stay tuned, we'll get this started in a moment. It is about time for this Jeep to... Get lifted. So stay tuned to check it in. Lots and lots of amazing packaging from Skyjacker. We are really impressed with the way everything has come packaged in that humongous box over there, as well as all of the parts and hardware that is perfectly labeled. Awesome, awesome job. I seriously love unpacking my Jeep parts. Got some control arms here. Wow, sick. that looks seriously. so nice. So sick. Can't wait to compare that to the one that comes off. So in preparation for this project, I went ahead and used this stuff, Liquid Wrench, our favorite stuff here, to go ahead and spray every single bolt that is gonna be removed on the Jeep just one night before, just to make it a little easier for us in the process. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the Garage Couple. My name's Ollie. And I'm Greg. I'm about to introduce you guys. Well, I took your thunder. Okay. <laughs> on today's episode, we are super, super excited for today. You guys have been waiting for this day for a while. What are we doing, babe? We are finally installing a four inch dual rate lift kit with M95 Skyjacker shocks onto our Jeep Wrangler TJ Rubicon. If you haven't seen the series of videos we've put out about this awesome Rubicon, well, maybe not so awesome. It's been giving us quite a bit of uh, leaks, issues, little, little you things know. here and there. We purchased it, we have a video on that, it's gonna be in the corner of your screen. We put these monster, monster 38 inch tires on there without a suspension or body lift, and they fit by the way. Videos in the description and up there as well. We then went ahead and did all these mods, we did rear main seal, we talked about the computer, we replaced the PCM, wow. we diagnosed the ASD relay, lots and lots of videos, and they're all on our channel. So right now, Take your time, check those videos out, and then tune back into this one. It, I promise you it'll make it worth be worth much better. You won't be sorry. So tell us, Aline, what's happening today? All right, you guys, we are installing a four inch lift kit. This lift kit is gonna change all of that. <laughs> and the nice thing, and I'll walk you through this in a second, but these parts are amazing. Skyjacker has some awesome, awesome lift kits available for TJ owners, JK owners, many other vehicle owners, not just in the Jeep realm. They make a solid, solid kit, and we decided to go with this one just because of all the nice reviews. And I mean, come on, look, just look at this hardware. Everything is labeled amazingly. Like, literally, there's everything is labeled. It comes with everything. They send this manual of an instruction guide, which you're able to review beforehand. You know, I love instructions, you guys. I love my instructions. So we're gonna just follow this today, make a step-by-step -step walkthrough, and you're gonna see the before and the after. In subsequent episodes, we have other stuff planned. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more content. This is and this is. What was that? <laughs> you know Greg's the, the terminology kind of guy. And um, Aline is the free labor. Rough. <laughs> <laughs> so let me walk through everything that comes with this kit. So these are the decals that come with it. I love the Jesus Rocks. Jesus is awesome. We owe it all to Jesus. Very grateful to be living in this country. Thank you all for your service and hard work. These are control arm replacements. These are lower fixed control arms. They are super, super heavy, and I'm excited to compare them once we take out the original ones. 
These are the M95 nitrogen charged shocks that come with this kit. These guys have a floating sim uh, piston in the middle and they're nitrogen charged. They basically have a good fast response time and they're thick and sturdy as well. Those are sway bar extensions over there. And these are bump stop extensions. That is all the hardware that comes with the kit perfectly labeled. And here is a rear track bar extender. Now these are the monster springs that come with the kit. I mean, oh my goodness. Just look at these springs. That is so big and it's dual rate, which means that it, your tires are gonna make more contact with the road. It will be less affected when you have heavier components like winches and steel bumpers. And so dual rate is definitely the way to go. Now those smaller looking ones are for the rear and those taller ones are for the front. We're gonna start off the job on the front. And speaking of which, let's talk about what you need to get the job done. Here are the majority of the parts you're gonna need to get the job done. We're gonna use air tools, but you could use hand tools. I have some extensions over there, as well as many different sizes of head. I also have some safety glasses, adjustable wrenches, ratcheting wrenches, which I highly, highly recommend for the spring compressor over here. I have a drill, some drill bits, and vice grips. Aline's gonna demonstrate the clamp right there. We rented this at AutoZone, it cost us $50. We're gonna return it once we're finished. I can show you how to use this in just a bit when we use it. Aline has done this several times before. That is a jack, those are jack stands. We also have a bottle jack, but we might not need to use it. We have done this job three times before, so it should be a little easier for us, but we understand that there's nuances with every install, so why don't we get started? Step number one, take the front wheels off and drop it down to the ground. Hey, what's going on? Said go down to the ground. Uh, what are you, what are you doing there, bub? You know, if you've seen any of my other videos, I tend to wear sandals doing all these jobs. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna wear these steel toe shoes, just so I don't get that one comment here and there that says, hey, why are you wearing sandals doing this job? So, right. gonna, grab, gonna grab our handy dandy instruction manual. Oh, and let's bust out the measuring tape. Let's just measure it beforehand. Yeah. Yes, I remembered. He loves his measuring tape. All right. Woo! Greg loves his numbers, you guys. That's not cool. Why? Numbers are fun. That's not fun. Mm -hmm. Okay guys, let us measure from the ground all the way till about mid to about the same. I'm gonna do the same thing both times. We're at about 42 inches. 42. Right here, so. Pen and pen. Let's write that down. 42, 42, 42. You know if you say things seven times, you'll never get forget it? 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42. Now I'm never gonna forget it. In fact. Driver's side front, 42. Yep, 42. Right. 43, looks like 44. Does that sound wrong? Nope, happens. 44, four, oh no, 42, 42, 43, 44. Very first thing you wanna do is- Chalk your tires, ha ha, beat you. <laughs> We're starting with the front, chalk the rears, and let's keep going. So I would recommend reading this once before you start, but, we're gonna just go in order, just to familiarize yourself with all the parts, all the all the hardware that comes is described there. There's a lot of amazing pictures. Step one, secure and properly block the tires on level concrete. Number two, jack up the front of the vehicle and install jack stands under the frame behind the lower link brackets. It's a good thing I'm wearing steel toe shoes, guys. Note to self, do a lift kit before you put 38 inch tires on. Now that you have the vehicle on jack stands with them behind where the control arm area is, there's three bolts on each shock that you must remove next. There's a 14 millimeter up top and two 13 millimeter bolts down low. I'm gonna take those out next and then we'll continue.
Top out. Ooh, I love the way that looks. Time to take the bottom out with a 13 mil. Chalk is out. Let's compare this with the one that comes in the Skyjacker oh lift boy. kit. Up we go. Look at that difference. I mean, this one weighs about double this one. I feel like it's more of a solid construction. And yeah, time to slap. Well, wow. we have some stuff to do. This shock is totally shot. I mean, look at that. You shouldn't be able to do this with a shock. So having bad shocks would lead to feathering, to cupping on the tire, that kind of thing. You should sh change shocks every 80,000 miles anyway. And I mean, hey, if it comes with a lift kit, that's not on me. So step number five for the front says, remove the OEM drag link assembly from the OEM pitman arm and lower it down. Take out the pitman arm with a pitman arm remover and use a drop pitman arm. Now, if you're not familiar with what a pitman arm is, it is this thing right over here. It comes with the kit, but I read a lot about this and I read on these vehicles, the TJs, for whatever reason, if you're not going to change the upper, whew, if you're not going to change, <laughs> if you're not going to change the upper track bar bolt and mount, you probably don't have to put one of these. Basically the, the suggestion is to use the Jeep. And then if you have any driving or steering difficulties, add this, but it's nice that it comes in the kit. For now, we're not going to put this on. But if you also need a pitman arm remover, they rent them out at AutoZone as well. Next, I'm going to go ahead and remove the shock on the passenger side. The same steps as you just saw. I'm not going to take you through it. If I encounter any difficulties, we'll catch you back then. But afterwards, the following step is to remove the lower sway bar end link. Now you want to remove the bottom sway bar end links, the one that connects to the axle. I have a, I have a T50 over here and I have an 18 mil over here and let's hope it comes out without a fuss. Almost too easy. <laughs> let's get this out of here. And we want to do the same on both sides. What do you love, Greg? I love when I grab the right size. So this is, uh, next up, remove the track bar bolt. This is a 15 millimeter and let's get to it. After you remove the track bar bolt, as you saw on the other side, what you want to do is remove the spring and the spring bump stop assembly. It looks like someone has already replaced mine. That doesn't look original, that looks really long to me, but I'm going to go ahead and remove the spring now. And basically you want to just wiggle the bump stop piece out, like so. Or just pull for the spring, I suppose. <laughs> Jeez. This is out. Let's get this guy out now. This wow. is out now too. I believe this is 10, 10 millimeter bolt. I'm going to use the one that came in the kit, so time to replace that out. You guys, I have to tell you, when we took the springs off my JK, it was not that easy. This bump stop here. Something tells me this is going to be welded on there. I have, I have a bad feeling. What do you do then? Dremel it off? Does Dremel work for welding? <laughs> it does, but at that point I would leave it off. Ran into a bit of an issue here. These are the bump stop extenders that come with the kit. This is our TJ, how it came. It looks like somewhere down the line someone welded this thing on. I mean, this piece is all one piece. It doesn't come off. So it might make our spring a little more difficult to install, but we're just gonna go ahead and keep this on and proceed from there. Now we're gonna take out the spring on the other side sure we didn't get the six inch lift? I mean, holy <laughs> moly, look at this difference. That is seriously insane over here. 
That is quite the difference, and it's dual rate, significantly heavier. I mean, just look at that difference. We're gonna go ahead and install this currently. Normally there is a little bolt that holds the spring in on the bottom of the left front axle. Didn't come with that. I guess some of the cons of buying a used Jeep. So now, and also the bump stops, can't remove them, and I'll leave those as is, but at this point you would replace those with all the hardware that comes in the kit. Now we're gonna reinstall these, and this is where the 3 4 inch ratcheting wrench comes in handy. You can use them on the, the coil clamps, make this small enough to fit, but I think we have quite a bit of room. But nonetheless, we'll We're find We're gonna out. have to compress for sure. for sure. Look at that thing. So Alin thinks I can't put this in without a string compressor. I think I can. What is our bet? Take me on a date. Well, I can't do that. Uh, COVID doesn't let. I'll take a filet with mashed potatoes, sauteed mushrooms, and mashed potatoes with a glass of red wine. Okay, and if you're wrong? What do you want? I want you to finish the back, the rear, and stuff. Bro, <laughs> the right. rear. Well, the first one's gonna be easier than the second one. All right, well, you need to do both to complete the bed. No, well, that's, you can't change the terms afterwards. Trash. Right, let's put this in. <laughs> <laughs> so first attempt without compression. <laughs> Looks a little tight there, Greg. Okay, gotta put this thing back on. No, this isn't gonna fit. So, just tips and tricks, Greg uh, sprayed that bump stop with WD-40 and it slipped right in. So, too bad that wasn't the bet. I know you guys are on my side. I'm gonna win that bet. And I'm gonna get a nice filet dinner and I'll make sure to post it on Instagram so you guys can enjoy it with me. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Greg? Yeah. Come back here. Come right in front of the camera. Tell everyone watching, come right back, come right over here. Come on, I'll come next to you. It has to be official. Shake my hand. Official. Walk of shame. Walk of shame. Go on. Try again. That's right. We're eating good tonight. Hey. <laughs> So excited, you guys. My best. All right, let's get the uh -huh, uh -huh. compressor time. So I really don't like using these. They make me nervous, and um, yeah, that's about it. So you're supposed to use a hand tool to tighten these down. It's a three-fourth inch. I found it really handy to have one of these with the ratcheting ends because it's gonna make it really easy to use once you're in place. Now you want one on either end. Put the locking tabs in place, one on each side here, and make sure you never point this in anyone's direction because they can come apart at any time, especially ones like this that have most likely been used, abused, the rental, you know. So, time to tighten, the fun process of tightening. So using the spring compressors and owing all in filet mignon, I was able to compress the springs and just slide it right into place. Next up, I'm gonna just jack up the axle just a little so it seats into its location. And then once I can get it to seat, I can easily remove, I could easily remove these clamps here. Aline had to go tutor, so I'm gonna take it from here until she comes back in about an hour to two hours. Now I'm gonna just remove this. I'm just using a hand wrench, three fourths. I did jack it up a little bit at the end of the axle just so it holds the spring in place. Once I remove that, time to install the shock. And we're making jam, guys. Now that you have your springs all in place, it's time to do your shocks. 
The bushings come separate on this Skyjacker lift kit. Just put some WD-40 and they slap right in. Now this is called the bar pin. This also has to slide right in. So just put some WD-40 and work your way in there. Don't be afraid to push and you could always use a hammer if you'd like. So I'm going to put some WD-40 now and tune in in a second. Grab one of your tools that cuts. First is going to be a metal, that metal piece that comes with the kit followed by the rubber grommet. Next up, we're gonna put these on top once we get there. But first thing is we're gonna bolt the bottom end onto the vehicle and then we'll cut this to release it up straight. Let's do it. Oh wow, I wanna cut it. I'm gonna do, that's my job today. Now that the bottom is all bolted in, as I'll link, we'll show you right now, I'm gonna go ahead and use some kind of cut, like cutter like this to just cut this wire. As soon as I cut this, it's gonna expand and you have to figure out how to line that up perfectly. So I'm gonna just pay attention to the top part here. It is gonna go up. It's pretty cool. Let's do this. <laughs> Little impatient? Yes. All right. It's in. It is in. Wow. Now let us go ahead and bolt up the top using the other bushing and also the metal clip. Okay. About to put the bar pin in. Gonna do the same thing to the other side. As you can see, it's like 80 degrees outside. It is hot, guys. Let's do it. Get it? All right, you guys, so we are following the instruction word for word, and it's telling us that we need to mount those tires back on before we get to our... So we have our end link, track bar, and control arms. So it wants us to put the tires back on. So we'll do that now. Shocks and springs are in. So I guess we get to see how high up our Jeep is gonna sit. Wow, <laughs> are you kidding me? How could I even work on the engine at this point? You need a stool, look at this. Garage couple stool, baby. That was garage couple Greg's mom saying we need a ladder to get to the top. <laughs> but, I mean, look at this, there's plenty of clearance. I don't think this is gonna be an issue at all. We're all done for today, tomorrow. Tomorrow, we are gonna continue with the front. Those three components left, sway bar and links control arms, and track bar. Once you do that, we're all done with the front. That's right, hopefully it only takes two days and not three, but today was pretty successful. Everything was very it's, easy. It's pretty straightforward. We just only spent four hours today. That's the... Time for dinner. Time for dinner. Catch you guys tomorrow morning, bright and early. <laughs> on to day two, Aline is currently teaching. I'm gonna screen share with you, so please make sure that your screen is facing mine. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen. And I am about to wrap up the front end of the Jeep Rubicon. Hopefully this doesn't take more than an hour or so and I can start working on the rear. Seriously can't believe how this is turning out. I mean, look at that. It makes 38s look tiny. I'm excited to see the fronts, the rear, everything all together and hopefully we can get this done today. And if not today, then tomorrow. So these sway bar ends are usually held in with uh, like, almost like wedge, wedge nut fittings. Basically hit this one with a mallet and look, it is out. Time to install the new one. So this is the kit of hardware that comes for the sway bar end links. We're gonna basically convert it to a through and through, just like how you see this one over here. 
so no longer has that tapered nut on the end. Those are the sleeves. Those are the bolts that go through the actual tie rod. And then what we have is hardware that bolts onto this. There's a specific way to install this and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it so you don't have any rubbing or clearance issues. So you wanna grab this apparatus and bolt it exactly to the bottom of the sway bar. So I'm gonna just hand tighten this bolt on there and now we're gonna have to grab a tool and tighten that straight onto there. Well, well, well. Look who decided to join the party. Alrighty, I'm still virtual. Here it is. Thank oh you my goodness, me. what a teacher. Let's do it guys, come on, we're excited. Let's get this done, let's get it done in one shot and we'll show you how it goes. Alright. Here's the sway bar end link. We're gonna go ahead and just put some grease into the eye holes. Is that what it's called, an eye hole? I don't want you to question it, but yes. <laughs> now that we have some grease, we're gonna slide our sleeves in. We should go in like champions, which they did. Number two. Yep, just goes in just like that. Now we're gonna grab our screw and we're gonna go ahead and install this piece now. Let's do it. So you want to go ahead and install the upper bolt with the nut facing outside of the vehicle so you don't rub your inner fender flare over here. And you also want it so that the upper part is out, more out than the bottom part. So you want it to curve in inward, starting out. So that's what we're going to do now. Just very simple, just keep it all aligned, just like so. Make sure the nut goes on the outside. And now we just have to tighten that down and I believe it is a 19 millimeter. So it is in, you will be using the stock hardware for that bottom. Time to do the same thing to the other side, starting with that adapter bracket and the nuts. So, so you're gonna need a 17 mil and a 19 mil to be exact. Exacto mundo. Hold on, kids. All right, Greg, sometimes I think you wish you were a teacher. All right, all right, everyone. Mute your mics. You know the drill. Uh, is that what I sound like? Yeah. That sucks. I think I sound a little kind. Er, ain't nobody, ain't nobody upset. The next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna move the track bar link, the track bar bolting location mounting location here. We are gonna move it to the right by three-fourths of an inch. So grab yourself a tape measure, grab yourself a nice tape measure here. Ruler is probably even better. From the center of the hole, get three-quarters of an inch and mark it right there. Time to drill it out with a 7 16th drill bit and use the OEM hardware to get it all back on. Let's start drilling. I'm gonna start the drilling process with a smaller bit. Now time to go to the 7 16th. Make sure you are wearing eye protection even if it fogs up. So I drilled the hole, front and rear. Time to install this track bar back into the original slot with the new hole we just drilled. If it doesn't fit in right away, I think I'll just jack up the front end of the Jeep and see if I can slide it in that way. Just as I predicted, it, it does not line up. So let us jack up the vehicle and let's see if we can make it line up. Jeep is jacked up and now I'm able to get this track bar aligned. I'm going to go ahead and turn the wheel with my left hand and try to slide this in with my right. Certainly helps to have more than one person. Now it's time to button it up. 
I was able to slide the bolt through after lifting it in the air. Let's see if this is the right size. I put the nut on the rear. These are the perks of buying a Jeep used. So the next step, I need to replace these control arms. However, we have to mark the cam on these control arms right over there. However, these don't have the cam lines that I was expecting them to have. And I need to show you what I found on the other side. Literally unbelievable. This is what happens when you buy a used Jeep. It could happen. Look at this. That thing is, that control arm, the cam bolt's not even in the right place. It looks like that hole for the control arm is totally spread open. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove these now. I'm not gonna pay too much attention to the cam lines because it looks like they're already toast. We'll have to address that at a future time, but for now, time to drop in these longer, heavy-duty control arms. Time to grab the impact. Remove this rear bolt. Time to remove the front bolt. Just in case, I'm gonna sharpie it up. Just like a straight line to the side or something. Why are you celebrating? Aline is back. That's right. I'm not alone. <laughs> this is the new control arm. This is the old one. Just popped it right out. Looks like they're about the same length, more or less. Yeah. Comparable for sure. Looks like they're about the same length. Mm -hmm. All right, let's put this new one, the Skyjacker control arm in. Hopefully it slides in. Maybe put some WD-40 all around. If you haven't seen so already, folks, WD-40 is your best friend. Juice it up. Hey. Oh, I don't think that's a song. <laughs> Hand tighten these things back on. Do only one side at a time. This side went in pretty easily. It is hard to get angles. Just as an aside, you guys, I know a lot of you guys have kids at home and they're teaching or they're learning online. I am a teacher, so if anything comes up that you guys have questions about, I know it has absolutely nothing to do with Jeeps, but I am here to help. So just shoot Garage Couple an email about anything of that sort and I'm happy to help. I want to leave these hand tied until you complete both sides. It does look like our cam is not lining up in the horseshoe, so we're going to have to figure out how to push that back into place. You have so much room though. Correct. Correct. Garage, Greg. On to the next. On to the next. Honestly, they're so sleek looking, I'm, I'm pretty into it. We're gonna need a set for your, your Jeep. That's right. Number two done. This is the old one right here. New one's about to go in. Let's do it. Put the rear in first, and then pivot it up. You might be wondering what is going on over here. We use the bottle jack. We use that bottle jack to realign. Is that gonna go in? I'm gonna just tighten it down a little more. Greg has just tightened down the other side. It looks like it lined up. So we don't need to do the bottle jack on this side. That needs some WD-40. Sounds nasty. Front is all done. Just had some breakfast. Time to do the rear. Let's take a look. This is how she looks currently. That is the front sitting on its tires. That is insane. And I cannot wait to see how it's gonna look with the rear. After spraying everything with PB Blaster, go ahead and take off the wheels, drop the vehicle jacket from in front of the front of the control arms there. And now I'm gonna remove the OEM shock. I'm gonna just take out the bottom bolt for now. Time to remove the upper shock bolts. Make sure you put some liquid wrench, PB Blaster, whatever you have. These are the ones that tend to strip on people's vehicles. 
Uh, I like to take the bolts out and just hit them with a layer of PB Blaster just to get rid of some of the rust that has accumulated over time. This stuff smells really, really bad, so maybe we can put this outside. <laughs> and I'm gonna keep taking out the upper shock bolts. They are 13 millimeter in size. See? This looks to be the original shock. It still has the Chrysler logo. Surprisingly, it's in decent shape. I mean, gives me some resistance and springs right back. Not bad after 130, 140,000 miles. But something tells me this, this guy over here is gonna be a lot better. I mean, it's compressed and it's about the same length as the uncompressed original. <laughs> so. All right. Next thing is shocks on the other side. Next, and then we're gonna get the sway bar end links and the uh, track bar. So let's do it. All right, you guys, we are removing the lower sway bar end link right now. I think we're using 18, right? That is right. This right. is an 18. Great. We're going to be doing this to both sides. Right, next up, we have the side, the sway bar end link. It is a 15 millimeter wrench on the inside of the vehicle and it is an 18 millimeter on the outside. Makes the job a whole lot easier <laughs> having the right wrench instead of using an adjustable. So we just removed the upper track bar bolt. God, so many words. <laughs> Well, Springs out. Came out pretty nice and easy. Bump stop. Bump stop out. This is gonna be a 10 millimeter bolt. Is that cue for me to go grab you? That is. All right, BRB. All right. Still haven't gotten to the lower track bar bolt. Did it go? Wow. Greg has exhibited many forms of creativity on this install. And it's out. All right. Let me show you that area. Sorry. Sorry. Babe. Sorry. Babe. Right over there. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the track bar. This is the device that I just took out. This helps keep your wheels centered under the vehicle and we're gonna basically be adding a bracket to the lower track bar mount so that it keeps the wheels centered after we lift it four inches. So let's continue. Let's look at the next steps. Hope it's the, as easy. Oh. <laughs> and now and that let's it get is. the bump stop ready. Give it some twisting. I think the official way to do this is with channel lock pliers. I like to just use my God-given pliers. <laughs> and now, time to search for the bolt that holds this in. I think it's supposed to be 10 millimeters. Oh, would you look at that? Love when that happens. It is, ours is 15 millimeters. So let's take this cup out. Time to add the extenders. I don't know if you noticed, but our front had welded on extenders. Our rear didn't. Part of the ownership experience of buying a 15-year-old vehicle. Quite the bolt here, guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> what a workout. You want to do the other side? Sure. Wow. I'm sure oh. I could do it faster. Dude, that's not going to fit. This is huge. Well, I guess back to the using the compressor. Dude, wow. That is quite the difference there. You want to move your head, babe? This is, this is I mean, maybe like six inch difference. This is gonna go up more, this is gonna go up more than four inches for sure. That's what I like to hear and see. It's gonna be like a five inch lift actually. Ready, on to the bump stop. Other side, same thing. The next step on the install is to work with the track bar. We're gonna do the track bar relocation bracket. So Aline will bring the camera over and we first it says to position the track bar bracket into place. 
this is the track bar bracket into place. It also then says, use the supplied 12 by 70 millimeter bolt through the OEM lower track bar location using the supplied spacer sleeve with a self-locking nut and tighten the bolt to hold the bracket in place. So, let us do that. Now, let me just see if this fits. Oh, it fits with the self-locking nut. First thing you gotta do is slide this sleeve on the inside of the bracket. You could see my hand is holding it in place. Now, with that supplied bolt, you can go ahead and install this track bar relocation bracket. And then using the OEM self-locking uh, nut, slide it in through the rear and catch your bolt so you can tighten it down. There is a gap, you guys, so don't get frustrated quick. There's a gap in there for that. I'm gonna just drill real quick. Yeah, yeah. Go. So as you saw there, we mocked up the track bar relocation bracket and we're drilling a half inch hole onto the side just for added security so the bracket remains tied down. I'm currently gonna just put everything back together, tighten it all up and then move on to the next step. Let's do it. The monster of a task, fitting the four inch lift strings into the rear. I'm gonna just clean this hole up a little bit. All, All right. right, we are almost. We are almost. We're in business. There. We're we in are business. In biz econ. <laughs> you know that college course we all loved. All righty. So install this with one space with one washer on each side. So let's do that now. Fantastic. Perfect, dude. Perfect. Now we have to go on the other side. We are. Gonna go a little bit out of order here. We are gonna do the control arms, the lower control arms first. And you know what, we could even just skip that and do it later. Once the tires are on and we can go underneath safely. Why don't we do that? Okay. Why don't we do it at the very end? Sounds good. Like as if, as if we bought new control arms. Okay. Let's just put the springs in, the shocks in, the bolt up the track bar, the sway bar end links, put the tires back on and then we'll deal with the We'll deal with the control arms, what do you think? <laughs> Sounds good, I think you're getting a little bit of a brain fart. Yes, yes, I'm so tired. This is a couple day job here, especially if you have tools like ours and you don't have a lift. Let's just hope that, let's just hope that we can put these springs in easily and take it from there. Let's do it. Bring it on over. All right, everyone, we are wrapping up day two. We haven't put the spring yet in the back rear. We only put it under one. Up against, I know it is not the best scenario. The Jeep is pretty much like tilting back, but we don't have one ton jack stands or like, like those larger industrial ones. And basically, it's gonna be an interesting way to put this all back together because, sorry about that, because we don't really have access to underneath the pumpkin we're gonna have to basically jack part piece by piece, place wood blocks under the rotors, just as you see, and then try to slide our jack um, underneath the pumpkin and hopefully get it all back. So I think another thing is, I think we're gonna do the control arm and also the track bar. Once we jack it back up, put it on its tires. I don't feel too comfortable working underneath this and I would prefer to do it with the tires on. We'll see what happens, stay tuned guys. Alrighty guys, we are entering day three. We're really excited. This is the day we are going to wrap it up. So let's go through what we have to do today to get this thing completed. We have one spring left. Passenger spring. We have our shocks left. Both rears. Control arms. Both. And then there's one more thing. Track bar, we have to just attach. We already did the relocation bracket, mm -hmm. as you saw yesterday. And then we also have the sway bar and links on both sides. What we're gonna do, because our garage, <clears throat> we don't have a huge lift and our, our jack stands aren't the biggest, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put on the, the spring, we're gonna put the shocks on, 
and then we're gonna lift it and put the tires on and we'll attach everything, the track bar control arms and the sway bar and link, we'll do that later. There's a lot of clearance over there so we're really excited to put the tire on first and just make things a little bit more safe because it's kind of like this right now. Let's do it. Let's go. Step one, put those clamps on so we can compress the spring. Things just to take note of if you're ever using these clamps is those corner pieces, they do tend to get stuck. So make sure that where you're putting them, there is gonna be clearance for you to reach them. One clamp off, one more to go, just about out. Oh yeah. Now I know it looks a little bit funny, it's cause the car is tilted the way it is. Both of the swings are in everyone. Time to put in the rear shocks. Once we put these shocks in, we're gonna go ahead and bring the car, bring the Jeep, sorry, back up. I'm gonna start with the upper bolts just because I wanna get that out of the way. And then I'll cut this and it'll come down towards the bottom. Alrighty guys, as always, coming in clutch. You wanna do the honors? You wanna cut it? Okay. But then you have to move up to the way. Can I have a cutter? <laughs> Coming up. You could be the cutter man giver. Thank you. Right here. So we finished the shock on this side, bolted it up, moving on to the next side. Tightening up that lower bolt. The shock bolt. Alrighty, second one's in. This now, is moving along, isn't it? Now what? All we, all we have left, sway bar and links which we can do with the tires on we also have control arms we'll do with the tires on so let's just put the tires on <laughs> so we had the issue of the pumpkin being on the floor this was our workaround we put a bottle jack over there jacked it from there got clearance and put the lift right underneath got these off the ground also we were using wood blocks to hold those up as well Good work, dude, good work. So safety first, you guys. We're trying to thread on the track bar bolts. However, we don't really feel comfortable with the Jeep like in the air this much. So we're gonna just go ahead, put the tires on, and then we're gonna figure out the other components. I think it should be fine, but for now, let's put these tires on and let's see what we've done. Let's do it. Nice. That's it. And it's down. Worth the hard work? Do you think? Oh, I think. Thinking good. I can sleep in here. Alright, I'll just try to get in. <laughs> can you get me a step? Bro. Try to get in. Oh gosh. How does it feel from up there? Sick. That feel so cool? So sick. Is this taller than our green one? Come on. Of course it is. I mean, just look at this. Are you kidding me? Here is the monster. We have to do just a couple things left. The longer control arm, sway bar and link. You know the drill. But for now, we're gonna take a quick breakfast break and continue right afterwards. Greg is currently wrapping up the sway bar and links. We got the left side done, working on the other. Alrighty guys, so we also had to reconnect the track bar. So I'm gonna show you over here where you would be looking, right over there. We are nearing the end, my friends. All we have left are control arms, and we are done for the day. Only took us three days, well worth it.
Here's the old one. I feel like I could sit up in here. That's crazy. <laughs> Let's grab the new one. You want to keep one side decently loose so that the other side doesn't give you hell. We did one. We have just one more control arm. Technically, we have to do the drive shaft. Sorry, I'm resting my head. It's just a little tired. We still have to do drive shaft. We still have to do upper adjustable control arms and an alignment for this thing to be street ready. Fortunately, we didn't have to do the transfer case drop because we have the Rubicon. And because we have the 241 MP transfer case, we actually don't even need a slip yoke eliminator. So guess what? We don't have a slip yoke on this thing. So let's do the other control arm and let's wrap this video up. Hopefully we can back it out of the garage and hopefully it fits. Otherwise we're gonna need to put some sandbags or something. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so we loosely threaded both sides. We're going back to tighten it and then we're done. Before you drive the Jeep off, make sure all the nuts that you put in are tightened. Make sure everything's back in place. We walk through the springs, the shocks, the control arms, the track bar. Am I missing anything? Sway bar and links, but that's about it. And then it's ready to go. Everything you touched, make sure it's tight. Otherwise, it's gonna rattle and fall apart. Now, before we can continue, we need an alignment. We're not gonna do that today. We're pretty, we're pretty tired. We'll do that another time, but we'll show you how to do that in another video. Mm -hmm. Also, in another video, we are gonna change the drive shaft as well as the upper control arms with adjustable units by Tom Woods. We're gonna show you with an angle measuring tool how to set your pinion and how to get everything buttoned up. Look at how tall this is. You know, in a couple of other videos, I had my hand up here. Now it doesn't work. This is insane. Yeah. That, that is insane. Oh, and for completeness sake, why don't we measure exactly how tall it became Let's do it. since we did it beforehand? Let's do it. You wanna switch? You want me to do it so it's consistent? Let's get rid oh, of the variables because right, I know which point I was doing it too. All right, buddy. So, already the champ. <laughs> I got demoted. Done, I couldn't have done it without these instructions. They are seriously amazing. I thought Drive. you were about to give me a shout out. <laughs> couldn't have done it without my all -in. So the driver's side was 42 with the tires on and it was till exactly this point. Now we're at a little over 47. Five, wow. five, five and a half. Five yeah. and a half inches almost. All right, that's gotta be the dual rate work in there. Now let's do this side. This one is also a little over 47. That was at 43, so it looks like we got four and a half or so over there. This guy is sitting here comfortably at 48. I believe it was at 44. Yeah, the back two are 44. And a little over 48 on this one, so. Solid four inches, at least. At least. At least four inches. These are some amazing shocks, like amazing shocks. I'm excited to drive it. So why don't we try to back it out of the garage? All right, let's try. I mean, we have some doubts about the fitting. Let me just grab my pogo stick to jump in here. <laughs> just to give you Running start, idea. running start. Why don't we, look, height to the bottom where your foot has to go is 36 inches. That's three feet vertical, right to that point. <laughs> Try getting right. in, go for it. Back tires are okay still? Yeah. After all this, it doesn't start, imagine. <laughs> Out those parts and do an alignment, but it is amazing. I can't believe how high this is. <laughs> and, so stay tuned for those future episodes. Be sure to check out our Instagram at Garage Couple and subscribe to our YouTube so you don't miss out on any content. Thank you for watching. I mean, I thought he was only going for an up and down, and I don't know where he went. 
I didn't get a chance to go in or reap the benefits of this three-day project. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Sorry, I think I hear him. That's right, there he is. <laughs> wow. insane.